Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Summit 2022. Uh, this is the main edition of Discovery Summit and it's been awesome. And this is the third day and um, we thank God for what he has been doing from the first day of this meeting. It's been uh, a glory to glory experience and um, a, a revelation ride. Amen to Jesus. Um, let's see all the prayer together as we get started. Sweet Holy Spirit, we bless, bless and appreciate you. We glorify you. Thank you for another time in your presence. We thank you for a privilege to share fellowship today. Thank you for the opportunity to go into the depths of your world. Holy Spirit, we recognize your presence. We know you are the owner of this meeting. Take all the glory. Teach us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, we glorify you, our Father, in this story. Let our life be blessed today. Let no man make the sin after this meeting. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Right, once again, we want to um, appreciate all our viewers and listeners from all over the nations of the earth. I want to say, big God bless you to you. Thank you for investing your time and your resources into your spiritual life, especially in these times where we are in. We need to know God more. We need to get deeper into the word of God. Amen to Jesus. And um, I want to also encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to reach the media evangelist. Click the like, the share button, and drop a beautiful comment so somebody can see what um, you said and then get attracted to getting to know what the Lord is doing in the course of this meeting. I believe we've been blessed thus far. I believe we've learned quite a lot. Uh, yesterday was a great eye opener, amen to Jesus. And I, I thank God for the things we are learning. Um, there's no end to knowledge in the things of the Spirit. Um, we just keep knowing. You know, so funny enough, you know, by the grace of God, I've been a student of the Word of God for decades and I've been teaching the Word of God for, you know, um, at least um, 20 years or about. And um, I just can't imagine how I keep learning new things from the Word of God. Amen. And that's the beauty of the word of God. It keeps you keep seeing greater light. You keep seeing more things by the help of the Holy Spirit. So um, we're trusting the Holy Spirit today for greater understanding, for greater light in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be continuing again and we're looking at the enlightening part two, the second part of the enlightening amen to Jesus. Um, um, I believe um, those of us who started with us will, will, will understand few by now. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. It says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Um, we have just two days left for this meeting. I thought we were able to we were able to go into these things that we are meant to know, but um, we'll just trust God for tomorrow and next month to be able to go into some of these things. Uh, we cannot be able to exhaust everyone uh, all, all of them. We trust God that in subsequent meetings, um, discovery summit will be going into more of them. Amen to Jesus. All right, thus far we have learned um, and understood what the eyes of understanding are. Amen to Jesus. We understand that the eyes of understanding is the spirit man of the new creation, the regenerated spirit of man. Amen to Jesus. Upon the gates, with the eye of our the eyes of understanding. And also it, um, it transmits through the eye of the mind. Amen to Jesus. And the body responds to it. So the eye of understanding is the spirit man of the new creation. And also it's the uh, mind of the, the eyes of the mind of a new creature. Amen to Jesus. Amen, Amen to Jesus. All right, now, um, we also understand, we also understood who the enlightened are. We were able to get, you know, a good foundation yesterday of who the enlightened are. are. Amen. I believe we are blessed yesterday. And, um, and today we are going to be continuing in that light also. And um, we also understood what the enlightened know. We understood that yesterday. We understood that the enlightened know they know God as their own. Are we together? And because that's the original intent for you to know who be God and know God as your own. Praise God forevermore. Now, in this study, we'll go further in knowing 
who they are lighting are. Amen to Jesus. We're going to go further in knowing who they are. Uh, because um, when we know who we are, we can live the life we are meant to live. Praise God forevermore. I believe that um, one of the challenges that the new creation has is the challenge of identity. Identity crisis. Identity crisis is a serious issue in the church of Jesus. And many of us do not really know that it's a serious issue. And that's the reason why it's a lot of arguments, a lot of disputings, a lot of crises here and there. Because there's so much identity crisis, and um, we have over the years not taken our time to know who we are, and it's affecting our relationship with God, even our relationship with fellow believers. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. And so that's why, you know, in, in, in summits like this, in meetings like this, we are given the opportunity to really know who we are. Amen. And to know what we are meant to know. You know, when I was teaching yesterday, I remember something about um, our sweet those words. The devil's word in his family made a standing order. Now, no other book should be read except from the Bible. Now, you may say that's so extreme. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you may say that's so extreme. But he knew what the Bible did for him. Now, this was a an illiterate plumber. An irritated plumber. His wife was one who was actually educated. An irritated plumber who, as it were, had no prospect of going beyond just breaking walls and fixing pipes. Amen to Jesus. And Jesus took his life and transformed his life and made him a voice that the world is hearing today. So, it was such reasons that gave rise to him saying, come on, put the Bible in the bread. And that was, you will be Jesus. Amen to Jesus. And um, the truth remains that um, it's good, yes, we have to go to school and education. But when you look at the ball, the long and short of everything, the summary of life is about knowing Jesus. That's the summary of life. The summary of life is that I may know him. Amen to Jesus. And the power of his resurrection. And of course, you've got some agreement for the blood to his head. Like I always say, have a first degree in accounting. Amen to Jesus. But today, by the grace of God, nations are hearing God's word through my mouth. Not because of accounting. Nations are listening to me. Not because of accounting, but because of who? Jesus. Amen to Jesus. Yeah, it comes with a lot of challenges, but we praise up and embrace these challenges because Jesus is all that matters. He's all we need to know. Praise God forevermore. Alright, so we're going to be continuing to know who the enlightened are. Yesterday's teaching you can go by it will help a lot to build the foundation for today. Alright, now. The, um, we are looking at the word enlightened from this verse of scripture we have looked at, John chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. And uh, it's, uh, we are looking at the Greek word for enlightened. And the Greek word is photizo. 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 Amen to Jesus. And that's the root word for photograph. Photizo. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Alright. Now, so, um, so uh, photizo, Thea defines photizo as to give light, to shine, to enlighten. To light up, to illuminate, to bring to light, to render evident, to cause something to exist and thus come to light and become clear to all, to enlighten spiritually, to imbue with saving knowledge. Amen to Jesus. Means to is what I want to say, it means to instruct, to inform, to teach. And also he said to give understanding to. Praise God forevermore. Um, I'm strong devising as to illuminate. Amen. It, it defines us to make to see. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, so um, basically, from this understanding of um, Thea's definition of enlightened and strong, we can then understand that to be enlightened is to be number one, to be giving light. Amen to to Jesus. To shine. To be lighting up and illuminated. Amen. To be brought to light and rendered evident. Amen to Jesus. To be caused to exist and thus come to light and become clear to all. To be enlightened spiritually, imbued with saving knowledge. To be instructed, to be informed and taught. To be given understanding. To be brightened up and to be made to see. This is what it means to be enlightened. Amen to Jesus. Now, um, you know, these words, they, they are just basically saying the same thing in different ways. Amen to Jesus. And, um, Basically, you can understand what who an enlightened person is. Somebody that you know has has been able to have all of this as his attributes. Praise God forevermore. And this is what actually being in God does to us. 
this one being in Christ does in us, praise God forevermore. There is no other enlightenment outside Christ. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, now, so in this life, we're going to be uh, answering the question who are the enlightened? Who are the enlightened? Amen to Jesus. Who are the enlightened? Because now, in, 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 the, in the previous studies, we understood this is the world to consider matter and then the kings to search it out. We understood that um, kings are those who search, kings are those who investigate. So, kings are enlightened. Praise God forevermore. Now, so we are breaking it down to know more what. The enlightened are made up of who actually the definition, the description of the enlightened. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah yeah. to Jesus. Amen. All right, now, so who are the enlightened? The enlightened are number one, those who are being spiritually imbued with the saving knowledge of God. Those who are being spiritually imbued with the saving knowledge of God. Now, um, as prophesied by Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist, John was sent by God to give knowledge of salvation. I get what I'm saying. He was sent by God to give knowledge of salvation. Now, the saving knowledge of God is it's 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 paramount to enlightenment. Now, without it, no one can be enlightened. Now, John the Baptist, tell you how important the saving knowledge of God was. John had to be sent to give this knowledge. I, I get what I'm saying. One of his primary purpose was to give the knowledge of salvation. That means salvation is a knowledge. It's a knowledge. It's a knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge of salvation, you cannot be saved. The reason why some are not saved is because they have not yet had that knowledge of salvation. Now, are you getting what I'm saying? And it's not just a physical knowledge, it's a spiritual knowledge. Now, I remember when um, I was a child, I always um, grew up to let, let the hair down. Solomon asked God for wisdom. But as I grew up and I began to study God's word, I'm still growing, amen, in the things of the Spirit, you know, as I began to study God's word, I discovered that Solomon did not just ask God for wisdom. He asked God also for knowledge. That means there is a knowledge that comes by acquiring of, um, by, by studying of materials and studying of books and research, I get what I'm saying, but there's a knowledge that comes from God. That knowledge, you don't acquire it by studying. You don't acquire it by researching. You can research all your life. You can study all your life and you will not still acquire that knowledge. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. It is that level of knowledge that made Solomon the father of philosophy and logic. We told Aristotle and Plato that the father of God. But no, both Solomon is the father. He's the author of philosophy and logic. Look at his sayings in, in, in Ecclesiastes. In plural, they're very philosophical and logical. Praise God forevermore. That not, where did he, which book did he read to get it? Are you get what I'm saying? It was a knowledge that came from God. And now we also need to understand that the knowledge of salvation does not come by reading books. The Bible says that, uh, it says, uh, 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 what Jesus was telling the disciples, he said, you are so privileged. For these things to the scholars, the highly educated, the, 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 the bourgeois, they really sought to have. But God did not give it to them and prophecy, but he chose to give it to you. The knowledge of salvation does not come by research. That's why you can be intellectually high, but spiritually wrecked. I get what I'm saying. The knowledge of salvation does not come by degrees. It doesn't come by professorate degrees. It doesn't come by doctorate degrees. It doesn't come by educational acquire, uh, 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 acquisitions. Amen to Jesus. The knowledge of salvation comes by and through the revelation of Jesus. That is why John was sent to give the knowledge of salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. He was sent to give it. It was an assignment. Are you getting what I'm saying? I would say, how can they hear if they do not, not preach? And how can they preach if they have not been sent? Then he said, how beautiful at the feet of them who preach the gospel. That's the reason why when, when people don't go out to give the knowledge of salvation, that knowledge cannot be gotten. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Even those that say I was in my room and Jesus appeared to me, somebody was involved in that happening. In one way or the other, that person must have heard about Jesus. Are you get what I'm saying? I heard about um, 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 a, a man of God. He was sick, so sick, uh, uh, his, 
immune system shocked that his temperature goes beyond any human capacity. In fact, they told him the way his temperature was rising, in no distant time, it would fry his brain. I get what I'm saying. His immune system could not manage anything. And he was, you know, of another faith. But they always used to hear about Jesus. And so one day he said, Jesus, I pray to all my people that they say I can pray to. I get what I'm saying. But they are not here. They are not answering. They are not healing me. Okay, Jesus, if you are truly real, if you are real, heal me. So that Jesus came to him and healed him. On the seabed, supernaturally, instantly, the temperature dropped to normal. Boom! All the his skin was literally burning. There were burning spots on his skin. <laughs> you see red spots. His skin was literally burning. Everything came to normal. He was a big time businessman. He was a he was a business mogul. He was a, he was wealthy. He knew business, but his mommy could not save him at that time. So when everything was when Jesus healed him in the hospital, when they came, the doctors said, "Yeah, this cannot be real. This is." <laughs> this is against medical science. It defies medical science. He said, Man, I agree with you. This what defies medical science is Jesus. And after everything, he began to he, he, he left business and started teaching Jesus. And teaching business from Bible point of view. I you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Praise God for But you see, if he didn't have if the knowledge of salvation had not been given to him at one point in time or the other. How will he know that there is Jesus that he can call out to? And you get what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Now, so that means on how important the knowledge of salvation is. That's why God had to send Jesus, uh, John the Baptist to bring it first. That's why we preach. Yes. That's why we preach. Because if we don't preach, some people will never have the privilege of getting the knowledge of salvation. Mm. The Bible says when you hear rumors of war and every other kind you hear, he said the end has not come. He said, but until the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth, the end will not come. That's why we are preaching. That's why we are using the airways. We thank God for the nations that God is reaching out with this, with this, uh, with our meetings we are having. We're so glad to, to receive an email that you know our, meet, our, 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 our teachings are doing well in nations like Cyprus. Are we together? Why? Because the knowledge of salvation has to go to places. It has to go to places. Yes. That's the reason why Christians must push their resources into the gospel. The reason why God is blessing you financially is not for you to increase your spending. It's to increase your funding of the gospel. The knowledge of salvation. Some people will not hear Jesus if you don't fund the gospel. Some people will not know that there is a name called Jesus if you don't give to the gospel. When we talk about giving today, see people start raising eyebrows, they start whining, they start crying, they start complaining, they start shouting. My brother, that is the devil speaking to you. Because if you know that John the Baptist was important for Jesus to fulfill his assignment, in other words, the knowledge of salvation was important for Jesus to fulfill his assignment. If John the Baptist was not sent before Jesus as a foreigner and to give the knowledge of salvation, are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus will not be able to fulfill his assignment. If you understand that, you know that you are important in this gospel. Are we together? Yes. In the, in the spreading of the knowledge of salvation. Like we said, it doesn't come by reading. It comes by the preaching of the word. And so, so many of them may say, I don't know how to preach, I don't know how to teach like this. And brother, you may not know how to teach, you know how to preach, but you can fund. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You can give. You say, but pastor, I don't have money to give. And then, okay, you can be a social media evangelist. You can share. You can like. You can send it on WhatsApp. You can send the link to all your contacts. In the funny enough, you know, some of us are very good at sending some things to our contacts. But we are not very good at sending the gospel to contacts. Are you what I'm saying? The knowledge of salvation. The knowledge of salvation. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 7. 7. It says, This is John the Baptist. And this is when the Baptist was born. Zacharias, his father, and you know the whole story of how uh, 
your mother said you're going to be called John, and then um, they said, no, not so, that, that's not the name, nobody has that name before. And they said, let the father give him uh, the name, and the father took a pen, told them to give him a pen, and the pen and let him write down. And so, wrote now, his mouth was open and began to prophesy. And this was the prophecy he spoke about John. He says, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Amen to Jesus. Amen. That was his assignment. And you see, this task of John the Baptist, which was to give knowledge of salvation to the people, to his people by the remission of sin, was simply witnessing of Jesus and witnessing about Jesus. That was what this task was all about. Are you getting what I'm saying? And what ways did John witness about Jesus? We did that, we, we studied that in, uh, in uh, one explosion. That was uh, last month. Or, yeah, all right. It was awesome. Go, go and listen to this. So basically, we're just going to one explosion. We're going to go one We're going to looking at John chapter 1. And we're going to stop at the same one. He prays much more. It was awesome. And how did John witness of Jesus? He witnessed of Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29 says the next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world he witness of Jesus as the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world and number two he witness of Jesus as the light of men he says there was a man sent from John chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 he says there was a man sent from God whose name was John the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him had believed so John came to give knowledge of salvation by witnessing of Jesus as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and the light of men. Now, so he was not only witnessing of Jesus as the Lamb of God that taketh the sin of the world and the light of men. He was revealing Jesus as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of men and the light of so the revelation of Jesus as the Lamb of God and the Light of God is the giving of what? The knowledge of salvation. And that's what we actually are meant to do. Praise God forevermore. Uh, are we together? So the spiritual, uh, this means that we spiritually imbued with the saving knowledge of God is to receive and know Jesus as the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world and as the light of men who light up men to shine to the world. That's what it means to be spiritually imbued with the world, saving knowledge of God. To know and receive Jesus as the Lamb of God. Now, in, that, in our studies last month, go ahead and look at and uh, listen to it. We understood that it's not enough to know Jesus as the Lamb of God. Are we together? Not enough to receive him as the Lamb of God. We must also do what? Know him and receive him as the light of men. Many of us as believers in the Lord Jesus, we are just, we are just at the level of receiving him as the Lamb of God. That's why you see... Um, the great teaching of he has washed away our sins, our sins have been washed in his blood, our sins have been washed in his blood, and we just we just come, we're just okay and just excited about the Lamb of God that took away our sins. But we don't want to venture into the light of men. Because the moment we venture into the light of men, it brings responsibility on us. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. Praise God forevermore. Um, and on the average, humans don't like responsibility. Christians not excluded. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, so every new creature who has and lives by this revelation of Jesus is enlightened. So when you have the revelation of Jesus as the Lamb of God and Jesus as the light of God, my brother, you are enlightened. You have received him as the Lamb of God and you have received him as the light of men. You, are, you have the revelation of Jesus, the Lamb of God, and the revelation of Jesus, the light of men. You are enlightened. That's what it means to be enlightened. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen to Jesus. Are we together? And, and this is one very important thing we need to focus on because we don't want to know it. Amen to Jesus. This is this is the knowledge of salvation. Are we getting it? And this knowledge is what many of us actually are not taking a full grasp of. Some of us only have a part of this knowledge. Are you getting me? And a part is not enough because the world we live in today is not a world that can be turned for Christ by people who only have a part of the knowledge of salvation. 
Are we together? Yes. We need the full knowledge of salvation for us to be able to take this walk for Jesus. And that's our taxi on it to take this walk for Jesus. Praise God for more. All right. Now, number two, who are those? Uh, who are the enlightened? The enlightened are those who have been given and have received the light of men. Are we together? Those who have been given the light of men, which is Jesus Christ, and they have received. Now, what is one thing for you to be given is another thing for you to receive. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, like we said, Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, and also is the light of men. Are we together? When He came, He gave Himself as both the Lamb and the light. Are we together? We are meant to receive Him as the Lamb and the light. But some of us have received Him as the Lamb, but we are yet to receive Him as the light. Are we together? And not receiving Him as the light means that you are not yet the light of that situation. Are we together? Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, what light have they been given and what light have they been received? The light that they have been given is the light of men, which is a light in the word of God, who is God. Amen to Jesus. Same word of God was made flesh in the person of Jesus, the Son of God. Praise the Lord with the Lord. Now, John chapter 1, verse 1, and then verse 4 to 5 and verse 14. It says in verse 1, it says, The beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. Verse 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Are we together? Now, in Christ, the world was life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Life dwells in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so, life, let me see what, life finds life in Christ. <laughs> Without Christ, life cannot have life. Are you getting what I'm saying? So life is actually dead without Christ. Because it is in Him. Are we getting what I'm saying? Yes. Amen to Jesus. But I said in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. It says, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I will be held his glory. The glory was as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. Truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Now, this means that every born again child of God, that's every new creature, with no exception, is enlightened. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. We are enlightened. Why? Because we have what? The Lamb and the light. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that's what that's the full package that guy that was given to us. It's our responsibility to do what? To receive the full package. And another thing is that it's also our responsibility to manifest the full package. Over the over the recent, over the let me use the word the past decades, we have been enjoying the manifestation of the lamp. I get what I'm saying. And the righteousness of God my righteousness. My sins have been washed in the blood of the lamp. I get what I'm saying. Um, 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 you will know see what this now. You will know the God in Christ Jesus. God could make love to in our yes, in Christ died for us. All the teachings of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is the teaching, that is the revelation of Jesus the Lamb of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But that is not the end. He didn't become the Lamb for you to end as what? The Lamb revelation. He became the Lamb so you can progress into the light revelation. And so you have a challenge where people say, ah, but these Christians, they are just confessing and confessing, but you see their life is just contrary to the ways of the Lord. The reason for that is that they've chosen to take only one part of the package, do every part, every part of the package that is given to them. Jesus is giving as for the Lamb and the light. We must receive him as the Lamb and the light. Selective reception is not reception. And that's what the church has been suffering for years. And that's why so, now it's so difficult to disciple people. It's so difficult to make people reveal Christ, to, to teach people about revealing Christ. People just want to, everything that Jesus died for, that's all they want. Ah, oh, he took away my sins, he washed my sins, he, he, he took my sickness and diseases, he made provision for finances for me, he gave me this. All he gave me is what I want. But now, the aspect of what? My responsibility. So we discover that by the, by the years the church has become so seeker sensitive and more irresponsible. We don't need to shout, 
for people to even, for example, if I'm doing a prayer meeting now and I'm prophesying, I'm prophesying. Oh, come on. Come on, the whole, the, my, my meeting, this meeting is going to be jam-packed. Yeah, it's going to be jam-packed. Because we just want all the Lamb of God entails. I get what I'm saying. But when you start going to the light of men, no, 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 Pastor, you are going too hard. You see, you are going too hard. That's why you have to suspend that. You see, nobody's perfect. Did I tell you you're perfect? You see, Pastor, you see, you see, Jesus, God loves us. Did I tell you God does not love you? But the love of God, is it an excuse not to be responsible? I get what I'm saying. Let, let, let's, let's leave that. I don't want to say much of that. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Enlightenment is Christ living in man, thus divinity residing in humanity, immortality dwelling in immortality, and eternity habiting in time. For the enlightenment. Are you getting what I'm saying? The all inclusive Christ, the comprehensive Christ. The integrated Christ. When we're talking about the all, we, I like using all these plenty words so you cannot say I don't understand. The all inclusive, the comprehensive, the integrated, the wholesome Christ. What is the wholesome Christ? Christ, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, and Christ, the light of men. That's the all inclusive Christ. If you are taking only the Lamb of God, it's not all inclusive. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you getting me? Yeah. And that's what we have been doing over the years. We just want to take what is what makes us what makes us fine. Are you getting what I'm saying? What's sweet? Was, as I was walking this evening, I was just walking um, somewhere and I was like, God, you know, I can't but do this I, I don't know. Anytime I try, before you know, I'm coming back to this line. You know, I can't but teach Christianity that is based on our relationship with God and our responsibilities. This kind of teachings people don't like it. I know. I get what I'm saying. But I can't change it. Why? Because it is not more people that profess Christ without proofs that we need. It is more people that have proofs of their profession than we need. The world is not having a problem with many Christians. The world is having a problem with many people that are professing Christ. Yet, no proof to their profession. Praise God for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. So that's what enlightenment is. Eternity living in, 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 in uh, eternity in habiting time. Divinity living in humanity. Immortality residing in what immortality. What more enlightenment can be can be up to this? I know what I'm saying. What more enlightenment can be up to this? All the plenty jungles we your enlightenment. What more can be more than this? Are we together? Now, you see, Col Colossians 1 verse 27 will be wraps it up. It says, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What more enlightenment can be greater than this? What more enlightenment can be up to this? Because there's nothing greater than this. What can be up to this? That the Lamb of God that take, took away the sin of the world and the light of men dwells in me. So I am the carrier of the all-inclusive Christ. Amen. I am the carrier of the comprehensive Christ. Amen. I am the carrier of inter the integrated Christ. Amen. Every carrier of the all-inclusive Christ is an enlightened man. That is why you have hope of glory. Amen. I get what I'm saying. Yes. Now I don't understand what somebody may be under the sound of my voice there. You are you are you are born again and you have been your life has been looking like no, nothing is gonna shine, nothing is gonna rise. You know what? The Bible says what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is a hope that you see. There is a hope that you manifest the glory of God. And what is that hope? It's Christ. Despite what you are going through, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You may be looking like the opposite of glory today. You may be looking like, no, 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 a far extreme opposite of glory. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But you know, the hope that glory will manifest to you is in Christ. So every time you look within, you ignore what is happening without. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. That's the that's 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 the height of enlightenment. They may say you are nothing. I, I, are you getting me? I started up by talking about sweet people's what? Who would have known an illiterate plumber? Who would have known him? There are people who were professors in his time, they were doctors, they were educated in his time. 
but they are as, as they as they are, as they enter the grave, their are, 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 are name enter the grave with them. But the illiterate global, after his death, his his legacy still goes on. Who would have known Peter, the illiterate fisherman? There were people who were scholars in his time. There were people who were who were doctors of the law in his time. There were rabbis in his time. But there was an illiterate fisherman. But this illiterate fisherman, even till second coming of Jesus, his name is still going. Yes. I know he's among he's one of the sitting among the, one of those that sit in the twelve thrones in the New Jerusalem. Wow. An illiterate. You see, enlightenment is beyond academic qualification. Yes. Academics is good, I'm not saying it's, it's bad. It's beyond, it's beyond academic uh, 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 achievements. That's why you may be looking like you are not enlightened. But I tell you, once Christ is known, there's hope that you will you're, you're, you're manifest in glory. Amen. I'm not just talking about glory to come in the new in, in, in the new heaven here. I'm talking about glory. See, I am too sure that there is a manifestation season for me. Amen. Why? Because Christ is in me. And I receive him as both the Lamb of God and the light of God. You know, today we went out for our evangelism. We do food soldier and our pastor, my wife, we do food evangelism. We go from one to the other, going to evangelize. We still do the evangelism. We do it, we do it. When we trek, when we finish trekking today, we are our Smartwatch told us we have walked four point something kilometers. Is that not so? Over six thousand steps. Wow! Just sharing the gospel with Jesus, just releasing the light. Many of us are so comfortable with the lamb. Oh, he has blessed me, and that's all that matters. But do you know how many people are languishing because you are not releasing the light? Praise Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. So, as recipients of God's light. The born again child of God, that's a new creature, is in turn the light of the world. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. As recipients of the light of men, you are now in turn the light of the world. This is where the responsibility comes in. And this is where we run away from it. You see, people say just by the grace of God. Whenever people want to make excuses for their irresponsibility as followers of the Lord Jesus, they just say it's by the grace of God. Or you hear them say nobody's perfect. We never told you you are perfect. But imperfection does not stop light. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Imperfection does not stop light. It doesn't stop light. Matthew 5 verse 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 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 You see, many of us are just comfortable with receiving the love of God and hiding the light of men. They are all them. See, I don't want to be fanatical. You see, I, I see, I don't want to be an extreme. You see, I don't want them to, to start calling me to the world, to start calling me the world. You know, you see, everybody will serve God in our hearts. I think that all those excuses, they are, they are lies from the devil and they are preventing you from your food. Anything that prevents you from releasing the light of men in you so you can become the light of God is preventing you from your manifesting manifestation as an enlightened one. Because the Lord said that it's not a shame of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation, both to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel. I'm not ashamed to, in my office for people to know me as Christian. I'm not ashamed in my office for people to call me man of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not ashamed in my office for people to call me pastor because it's like he's holding my own. I'm the only one like I'm the only one carrying that on my head. Yes, I'm not ashamed of that. That is what it means to be a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? For people to look at you and see the lights. For you to always give the light out, release the light out. Are you going to say, I'm not ashamed? I'm a thousand apostles, apostles say, are we together? And tell me, the enlightened that those who have received the light of men and made light and have been made light of the world. And they shine. Praise 
not your mother. Those who are receiving the light of God, you remember the light of God, talking about the word of God that's going to reach us. And they have been made the light of the world and their nation together. That's why I said, many like the land of God. Because that's what gives them the provisions. I get what I'm saying. But many don't like the light of men. Because that's what brings them, gives them the responsibilities. And we know Christians like provisions. They don't like responsibilities. And I get what I'm saying. We like provisions, but we don't like responsibilities. We actually want God to give us everything. Yes, they are giving us everything, but our responsibilities in response to God's law. In fact, they have to preach to you to go and evangelize. They have to preach to you to do everything. But nobody preaches to you when it's time to pray for God to bless you with husband, God to bless you with wife, God to bless you with children. Nobody has to preach to you. <laughs> nobody. Before they raise the prayer point, they're already praying. If I, and like I said, if I'm doing a prophetic prayer meeting now, I, I'm those who are believing God for financial breakthrough, those who are believing God for quick money, those who are believing God for car, for house, my meeting room would have been very full. Because Christians have been wired for the Lamb of God. But we have wired ourselves to the light of men. And this is the this is where the devil is playing the fast for the us. And I, I go and I, I scroll like and I see meeting rooms prophesying. Prophes- I'm not against this. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm for it. I'm actually for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But I've understood with my relationship with God that my brother, prophecies are good, but the word you get from God's word by yourself is the best. Yeah. And the, the prophecy you get from God's word is gotten in the grace of you walking as the light of the world. Because as you walk as the light of the world, you will be seeing more things. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, Matthew 5 and 6, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Now, it starts from us receiving the light of men, and then we are now made the light of the world. But being made the light of the world is not enough. We now have to shine. And one of the definitions of to be enlightened means to shine. Now, this is, a, this is a place that many of us, some of us are always good at. I'm the light of the world. I've been made a light. I am a light on approachable. Thank you. I agree with you. You are light on approachable. My brother, shine now. My sister, shine. You see, see this, we're not giving these blessings to boast with them. We're not giving these blessings to brag with them. You know, by the day I have understood something that when God takes you through the journey of walking with Him, one of the things that He brings out of you is a man who can only boast in your weakness. I'm not the person that I boast in my weakness. That is strength that God has taken from me. He's a man that only depends on God's grace. We're not made, we're not giving the light of men to shout and be light. No, light does not need to shine. Bible says the light shines in the not need to shout, sorry. Bible says the light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not what? Grab it, does not contain it. Light does not need to come as a uh, into the man. See, I'm light to, I'm light to see darkness I went out. See, I am you know who I am. No, if you ask if light starts in who I am, that means there's a problem. I get what I'm saying. Yes. Light does not need to shout, it just needs to shine. What we have today is shouting lights, not shining lights. Bragging lights, not shining lights. And this world we are living in is not going to be taken by storms. The bragging and shining lights. It's going to be taken by storms. The shining lights. The enlightened are those who have received the light of men for the singular and sole purpose of shining it. Not to hide it. Not to put it under a bushel or to brag about. We see me go to church today. We see people everywhere you go, social media, go on the ground. You see people, you just see people brag. You see different noise everywhere. By the mission field, where you see people preach, people holding microphone. You just walk a few steps and you see that person preaching. You walk against small, you see that like, Who is listening? Who is listening? Who is listening? Who is listening? You know, praise God forevermore. Now, who is listening? Who is listening? Because instead of light shining, we have become what? Shouters. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? We have become shouters. Instead of us shining, we have become shouters. 
You are shouting. You are my brother, my sister. The devil is not moved by shouts. Are you getting what I'm saying? The world does not listen to shouts. The world only gives attention to light. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So that's why we're giving light. That's why we're enlightened, not to shout, not to make noise, not to brag, not to hide it. Why some are shouting, some are hiding? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Others are bragging. Some are putting it on that bush here. Praise God forevermore. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, b to 15 says, A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Praise God for the So this makes us understand that the proof of enlightenment is shining, <laughs> not shouting. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying? Not bragging. The proof of enlightenment is what? Shining. My brother and sister, stop shouting, start shining. My brothers and sisters, stop bragging, start shining. The proof of enlightenment is shining. When Christians fail to shine the light of men in us, we prevent the world from giving glory to our Father in heaven. Are we together? Yes. So that's the reason why you are enlightened, but the effect of being of an enlightened person is not the same. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because we are failing to shine. We are just walking with the lamp. We are not ready to manifest the light of men. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, how do we shine in this light? And that was how do we, as a lighting being, manifest our enlightenment? How do we shine this light? We shine the light of men in us, same way the light of men himself shone while he was made. That is we shall. We can't do the different way. Are we together? And this is done by what? Doing good works for God. Because that was what the light of men did. Matthew 5 verse 3 means, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, your good works, and glorify your Father in heaven. And glorify your Father. See, some of the time when you look at Christians, you know, it's so difficult for you to even do things with Christians because the good works are not there. The good works that the Lord did, they are not there. When I'm talking about good works, I'm not just talking about charity. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's part of it, but it's not all there is to it. Good works begins with the spiritual work. Why do I say so? Let's look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Are we together? He was doing good. You can see, it says, Let that, you, um, uh, uh, that they may see your good works. And here it talks about Jesus was doing good. And it says, And healing all that you oppress of the devil. So there is no way you can do good works without healing those who oppress the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. The conjunction and means both go together. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So it's not enough to say, I'm doing charity. The, what is the end result of your charity? Is he healing those that are oppressed of devils? Yes. And I mean healing those oppressed of them, is he getting people saved? Is he get, get, getting the demonic, demon oppressed ones free? Is he getting people healed? If what you did was just a charitable work, then you have not actually done a good work before the Lord. You have done charity work, humanitarian work, but not a good work before the Lord. Because if it's a good work before the Lord, it must do what? It must heal those that are oppressed of them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Salvation of souls must follow. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you're trying to do good work, salvation of souls must follow. Demons must be casted out of people. People that seek God be healed. He says, Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of devil? If it, if it, if this was not important, they just said, Who went about doing good? Some of us are so like that. Oh, what is the Christian we have to do good? We have limited pastors to uh, humanitarian churches to humanitarian organizations and pastors to founders of humanitarian organizations and NGO. Oh, he's a good man, he's a good pastor, he's a good man, or he's a good Christian because he's doing humanitarian services and charitable services. But let me tell you, if the good work does not accompany, it's not accompanying with what? Healing all that are oppressed with devils. My brother, you have not done a good work before the Lord. You have done a humanitarian service. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? And humanity will give you reward, but eternity will not give you reward. Are you getting what I'm saying? For it to have an eternal seal, it must go alongside with what? Salvation. Deliverance. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the enlightened cannot be hidden. This is why they are needed. One of the ones that talks about the enlightened is what we need them here. They cannot be hidden. So no one hides a, 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 a no one lights a candle of in the bush. The enlightened cannot be hidden. If you are the enlightened, if you are born again and you are still hidden in your environment, it's time for you to cry. Are you get what I'm saying? You see, we are not doing, I'm not preaching for sure. I'm not preaching to look for audience. I'm not preaching to look for uh, publicity. Are you get what I'm saying? I'm preaching because the, I am carrying the light of men and of necessity I must what? Shine. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, the, that's it. You cannot hide light. If the, the lightings are made man evident and they are brought to light and they are made clear to all. Then that was they are manifest. And let me say manifestation is in dimensions. It's in levels. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. At least you as the light of the world start manifesting at this level. If it's your family level, manifest. Are you getting what I'm saying? If it is your street level, manifest. If it is your village level, manifest. But you and the enlightened must what? Manifest the light of men in you. I believe somebody has been blessed. And you want to understand my voice, you don't make it just another thing. That's the greatest decision you can ever make. You want to make that decision, please just say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died and resurrected from the Calvary to be shared with me. Take away my sins. Jesus, today I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that I know that I was not saved. I surrender my life to you. Because you that you chose me, I choose to save and put you in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, now I pray for everyone who has prayed this prayer. Thank you for receiving them from the Lord. Thank you for granting them the grace to save and put you in the gates of my life. Be glorified, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we cause sicknesses and diseases, we cause every form of infirmity in the name of Jesus, we declare and declare by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. Amen. We cause tumors, cancers, cancer we command you die Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cause fibroids, we cause spinal disorders, Amen. we cause every form of disorder Amen. and we command it to become reordered Amen. in the name of Jesus. We cause every form of retrogression and we command it to be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Healings in bodies. Amen. We decree wholeness in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cast out the spirit of infirmities. Yes, Healings in minds. Amen. Healing in souls. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every soul wound, soul injuries be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare and declare every being occupying a being and, and against the wish of such being. We cast you and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Amen. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus yes, every object living in any human being now. Fall off now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every creature occupying any human being. Get out now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every movement in anybody. We command movement. Stop now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We break truths and healings. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to pray one prayer. Just one prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shine. I shine. I shine. I shine. I shine the light. I shine the light of men. Of men. In me. In me. Open your mouth and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in me. In the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in me. In the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in me. In the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in me. Masumbre ketelebe, sumbre ketelebe, kesumbre asalada shi. Lenzumbre ketelebe. In the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in me. Simbro kore ni breke, simbro. 
in the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in here. In the name of Jesus, I shine the light of men in here. Sumbreke, sumbreke, tebeke, tosha. Mirakasimiri, katumagadabasu. I shine the Lord Jesus. Redingo, no longo, tosha, no bodosa. Mambra, akatupra, atalaswata. Regete, peskete, de. Rambri, egene, levedus. Rakatumbre, kete, nebedesh. Rumbo, kotolo, bosiata. Rebe, kete, nebe, kete, nebe, Rambri, yoko, simbre, ketosha. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we shine you in us. Yes, Lord. We manifest you in us. Amen. We are enlightened. Yes, Lord. And we reveal you to the world. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. Be glorified forever, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your time once again. God bless you. Bless you. See you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to this teaching. We believe you were blessed listening to this prophetic and life-changing teaching episode. We would like to receive your praise report of your encounter with the Lord through the ministry of Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. To send in your praise report or make a request, kindly send us an email via ministry at gmail.com. If you need more information about the ministry and would like to give a love offering today, you can visit our website via www.chimdiohahunaministry.org. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Wow. Beloved, thanks for listening to Grace Life Komi Podcasts. We believe that you've been blessed via this episode. We request that you also remain connected to us via our other social media handles on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and YouTube. We are Grace Life Komi on all these platforms. Also, for more information about the ministry of Pastor Chimdi and Funke Oahuna, kindly visit chimdioahunaministry.org. You can also send us your requests and testimonies via email today through chimdiwahuna ministry at gmail.com we are dedicated to feeding your spirit man with spiritual meals that we edify equip and engender your growth in the knowledge of god remain connected to grace life komi god bless you jesus is lord